This week on TGC News, Harris Publications closes its doors, HK kinda likes you, and the top three budget precision rifles. I know how many of you guys freaked out when I showed you guys these badass ammunition displays from Ballistic Concepts for the first time. Well, guess what? I've come together with them to give away not one, not two, but three archetype ammunition displays. One grand prize winner will get this ultra custom TGC engraved 20 millimeter display, and two runners up will get one of these TGC engraved 50 BMG displays. To enter, hit the link down in the description to head over to theguncollective.com and follow the steps to get entered. The winner will be announced on May 30th. Welcome back. My name is John Patton, and this week's first story is about the downfall of a firearms industry giant. What I'm about to say may upset people, but like what I have to say or not, they did this to themselves. Harris Publications, the publishing giant behind such memorable magazines like Juicy, Great Backyards, Celebrity Hairstyles, Flea Market Style, Dog News, Who's Who in Baseball, and Beach Cottages, has closed their doors. They also published a few gun magazines like Combat Handguns, Guns and Weapons, Tactical Weapons, and most recently, the Recoil Knockoff Ballistic Magazine. A company statement regarding this news said, It is with great sadness that we are announcing the closing of Harris Publications. For nearly 40 years, Harris Publications has been a mainstay in enthusiast publishing. That's a shame. You never like to see established businesses go out and people lose their job. But they also said the magazine publishing industry has been through turmoil in the face of rapid ascendance of digital media, changing consumer content preferences, magazine wholesaler struggles, and consolidation in the supply chain. We have tried mightily to persevere against these forces, but have been unable to overcome these challenges. And to that I say, they are not the first magazine to fall, and they are not going to be the last. The simple fact of the matter is that there is an enormous cost to produce a physical product and to distribute it like magazines are handled. And on top of that, in the gun world specifically, magazines have garnered the reputation of putting out the worst load of bullshit content possible. On top of that, the cost of their advertising for manufacturers to get involved with them is freaking absurd. And on top of that, the return on that investment in advertisement for the manufacturers can't be really tracked and is therefore weak at best. I saw people on social media reacting to the news of Harris closing its doors with surprise and sadness while I'm sitting there going, who the hell didn't see this coming from 10 miles away? By the time the content hits newsstands, it's already three to six months old and has been beaten to death by internet reviews, articles, and videos. How could this possibly survive in today's day and age? Their behavior in putting out nothing but advertorials has created a culture of lies and deception toward the readers. That just won't fly anymore. And what's funny about this situation to me is magazines like Recoil have continued to thrive because they don't act like they know better than everyone and continue to adapt and evolve what they're doing. Perhaps the reaction of sadness and surprise was one of fond memories of a magazine that used to be great and not the current cares about that magazine. So I say good riddance to the old ways. That just means there's more opportunity for those of us with the ability to adapt. What do you guys think of gun magazines closing their doors? Is it a good thing or a bad thing? Let me know down in the comments. And in You Suck and We Hate You news, Heckler & Koch is reportedly bringing a new pistol to market here in the United States. Avid watchers of TGC News will remember that I talked about HK not giving a shit about the civilian market here in the U.S. not that long ago here on the show, and as it turns out, I'm still right. I was unable to confirm this with HK, but the word on the street is that the SP5K, otherwise known as an MP5 pistol, has been approved for import and will be here in July. That was announced on Kentucky Gun Company's Facebook page, followed by a product information page, which appears to be the real deal from HK being spread all over social media. The price is listed at a laughable 
$2,699 MSRP, which simply says to me that the only people that are going to be buying these are HK collectors. With all the clones and facsimiles of the MP5 on the market at well under $2,000, there's almost no reason to buy this gun from HK. Now, the important thing to note here is that this thing does not appear on HK's website or on their social media and could be total vaporware. We all know how ridiculous it is to deal with the US government from our end. Now imagine trying to import a gun into the States from Germany. It's gotta be a nightmare. And even if this does become true, I'm not buying one. Now, according to the Firearm blog, this has been a three-year process for HK, so who knows? Maybe they do care about you. Maybe they want to sell you cool stuff. They've been trying for three years, and the government is the problem in this equation. Who am I kidding? They still hate you. And now for another top three segment where I pick my top three guns in a specific category. And this week's category is budget or entry level precision rifles. I get asked quite often about rifles that are considered budget, but that term is kind of vague. So this time I'm going to be concentrating on guns that are under $1,500 retail. At number three on the budget precision rifle list is the Savage Model 10. There's a bunch of different variations on this. And at a sub $800 MSRP with good accuracy, ergonomics, etc., etc., threaded barrels, all these things, they land at number three on the list. Number two is a rifle that has seen some trouble over the last years, but still has a solid second place because of the massive aftermarket support. It is the Remington 700. Hopefully Remington will get squared away on the quality issues that they've been seeing, but the 700 is still a great rifle in all kinds of variations. And last, but definitely not least, a rifle that no one expected and has blown me away personally, the Ruger Precision Rifle. Not only was I able to knock the center out of a clay target at a thousand yards with one of these chambered in 243, not a 6.5 or something else, it was a 243 at a thousand yards. Thanks, Ben. But this is the most complete package that I've seen from a mainstream manufacturer that actually holds up in the precision world. We've seen guns with ridiculous muzzle brakes and stupid stocks, but nothing that is as complete as the RPR. The only problem is they are extremely difficult to find right now because they're so popular. Whenever someone asks me about a bolt gun for long range fun or something like that, I tell them to get the Ruger. I challenge every single bolt gun manufacturer out there to beat Ruger on this as a complete rifle. I want to see it. That is the gold standard for budget or entry level rifles as far as I'm concerned. So guys, that is my top three budget slash entry level precision rifles. If you think I'm a moron or your list is just maybe a little bit different, leave a comment with it below and be sure to stick around until after the break for this week's Friendly Fire. The blasting cap from RE Factor Tactical is built on a flex fit mesh platform to offer a form fitting cap that keeps the operator cool during intense activity. Featuring not one, not two, but three patch panels, you can morale the f out of your head. And they're finally available again in woodland camo. To get 10% off your entire order, click the link in the description to check out refactortactical.com and use the code TGC10. This week's friendly fire question is from EOD Mays on Snapchat, and he asks, what was your most regrettable firearm purchase? This is a fun question. It was sometime in 2010 or might have been 2011. I went to a shop in my area called Classic Pistol. They had a matching serial number set of SIG rifles, the 556 and 522, and I love the idea of having matching serial numbers, so I bought them, and I wanted a handgun at the same time. And I decided to buy the Walther PK380, which later turned out to be the first gun I ever did a review on, and that review is quite possibly the worst review known to man, but that gun was a close second worst. Oh my God, what an awful gun. Super picky on ammo, it's a pain in the ass to take apart and clean, the mags were hard to find, and when you did, they were expensive, and it just wasn't a good choice. I traded it in on something else, which I can't even remember, it might've been a Glock, might've been a shotgun, I don't know at this point, but it's long gun, and so are those SIG rifles. My friendly fire question to you guys, with the recent passing of the legend, Pat Rogers, rest in peace, sir. Who would you most like to learn from in the shooting world? 
let me know down in the comments. If you want your question answered right here on TGC News, you can post that on Facebook.com slash The Gun Collective. You can send it to me on Snapchat, or you can post it on Instagram, and be sure to tag The Gun Collective. And guys, unfortunately, that is it for this week's show. You know what to do if you enjoyed the episode. Hit like and share it with your friends. If you didn't, let me know down in the comments so we can talk about it. Do not forget to subscribe. You won't want to miss a single week of the show. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. The shirts worn in today's episode of TGC News were provided by Patriot Patch Company. Click the link in the description to learn more.